To get the best possible results from your laser, some testing is required. This is the case for just about any laser, regardless of the type or source. Two important settings to get familiar with early on are power and speed. Optimal values are different for each material and laser. There's also some personal preference depending on your desired result. Most manufacturers provide recommended speeds and powers for various materials that are a great place to start but can be limited. Lightburn has built-in tools that will help to speed up this calibration process for you. In this video, I'm going to be using the Orter Laser Master 3 along with some 3mm project wood. Before we begin testing, make sure your laser is well aligned and focused. These factors will heavily affect the results. For speed and power, we will use the Material Test tool found under the Laser Tools drop-down menu. The Material Test can be used for both cutting and engraving. This tool allows you to input values that will then generate a test grid of speeds and powers to run on your material. The result of this grid will determine the best settings for the material. Don't worry if you feel a bit overwhelmed by the options in the Material Test dialog window. We will be going through each setting one by one. Starting under Vertical Rows, we have Count which is how many samples you want to test and the range you will be specifying. A bigger number will help you fine tune your settings a bit more, but will take longer to run and create a larger grid. You can always run multiple smaller grids. In most cases, the default value of 10 works well. The parameter box will allow us to test a few different things. It's here that you choose the two parameters that will vary over the test grid. For this video, we're going to stick with the defaults, speed and power, but you can also change interval, pass count, and possibly other depending on your laser type. Next, we need to define the minimum and maximum speeds we want to test, which will create our range for the grid. The values you choose will vary greatly depending on your machine, material, and whether you want to cut or engrave. In my case, since I'm using the Laser Master 3, I'm going to reference what Orter recommends. For basswood, they recommend 15,000 millimeters per minute for engraving, so I'll use that as the midpoint and set the min to 10,000 with the max to 20,000 millimeters per minute. If your laser manufacturer does not provide recommendations, look for a comparable laser to at least give you a starting point. Height and width specifies how large each block on the grid will be. The default value for both is 5 millimeters and works great for most instances. If you don't have enough material to run the test on, you can always scale down the blocks a bit. X and Y center lets you choose where the test grid will run. If you have your start from mode set to current position or user origin, both Y center and X center will be grayed out. For absolute coordinates, the default values are half of your work area, which puts the grid in the very center. If you have any questions about the different start from modes in Lightburn, be sure to check out the Understanding the Different Start From Modes in Lightburn video linked in the description. The only difference under horizontal columns is that we need to set the min and max for power. Just like with speed, seeing what the manufacturer has as a reference is a good idea. Orta recommends using 100% power. For our 10x10 grid, I'm going to set the min to 10% and leave the max at 100% to give us a wide range. Under material settings, we have a few additional options for our test. Here we can add sub layers, enable air assist, change mode, and set the number of passes. Line mode is what we would use if we were trying to cut through the material. Since we want to engrave, we need to change the mode to fill, which will update the settings we can change. We will be covering line interval in an upcoming video, but for the material test, 0.1 to 0.2 millimeters is a good range for CO2 or diode lasers, and 0.05 to 0.10 millimeters for fiber. Along with our grid of squares, the material test will output text so that we can easily reference our results. We have full control of the text parameters under Edit Text Setting. For this, Fill Mode and Single Pass will typically work well. We also need to set the speed and power for the text. Using the recommended engrave setting for the manufacturer here is best. For the Orter Laser Master 3 on Project Wood, that will be 100% power at 15,000 millimeters per minute. Now that we have our test setting set, clicking on the Preview Window button will show a simulation of our test job. Pressing play in the preview, or by clicking and dragging the slider, we can see that first our text will be engraved, followed by our blocks, being filled from left to right, starting at 10,000 millimeters per minute and 10% power, working their way up to 20,000 millimeters per minute and 100% power. You should always check the preview window before running a job to make sure it matches your expected output. Now we are ready to place our material onto our laser's workspace. Back in the material test window, click on frame to have the laser frame the outer perimeter of where it will be engraving. The laser should stay over your material for the entire frame. 
If not, you will need to adjust your origin in Lightburn or physically move your material to be under the framing location. Once verified, press start to begin running the test grid. Make sure you're present the entire time you are running the test. You should never leave a laser running unattended, and since we are testing unknown values, you really want to make sure you can react quickly. The length of time the test will take is fully dependent on the size of your grid and the speeds you chose. In this case, it was roughly 15 minutes from start to finish. Looking at the finished test, we can see that although the recommended settings of 15,000 millimeters per minute and 100% power doesn't look bad, we can still increase speeds further with little difference in result. What you cannot see is that at the recommended settings, you can feel quite a bit of material has been removed from the surface of the wood. Unless this was the desired outcome, 18,000 millimeters per minute and 90% power gives a dark mark but leaves a much smoother surface. You should now have a much better understanding of how the material test tool works and how you can use it to quickly find the best settings for your material. In a future video, we will go over how to use Lightburn's material library to store these settings for easy access later on. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos on mastering Lightburn.